Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me for this video. Um, this is one that I've really been thinking about since my dupes video that I did not too long ago. As I was in the process of coming up with dupes, I hit a lot of brick walls on different products. Um, there are some formulas that are so good, just so unique, that it's very, very hard to find a dupe for them. In fact, I haven't yet found dupes for these things, so I thought I'd share those with you. I thought you might find that interesting, like, because there were some amazing incredible dupes in that video. There are some things I'm really proud of finding, really happy to pass along. But what about the, at least so far, undupable? I want to share those things with you. You're going to find um, some patterns here. There are some certain lip products where it's just a formula so good, so unique, has some elements that are just very, very hard to find again in another product. Also, you're going to notice some cream products here. Um, I find that different powder products, usually like, let's say, a powder highlighter, a powder blush, those dupes I can find a little more easily, but really duping a cream texture is more difficult because then it seems to go beyond color and usually there's a more unique formula that you're looking to find a similarity with. So anyway, let's get started. Um, I'm wearing most of the things that I'm going to be mentioning in this video. There are a couple where it's the same type of product, so I couldn't really apply it twice, um, two different ones for this video. But for starters here, this product from Huda Beauty called Tim Contour. This is a contour and bronzer cream, they call it, and I have it in the shade called Light. I think this is a super underrated product. This is probably the most fantastic cream bronzer that I have ever used. I just can't believe how effective this is, how creamy it is, how light it is. It leaves no, like, tacky residue on the skin. It blends like a dream, and a little goes a long way. I like to use it with a brush. I'll show you the brush I've been using most recently. It's the Sigma Extreme Structure Contour F04. Um, so it's kind of a dense little guy here, and I can go into this, just very little pressure actually, pick up some product, lightly buff it into the skin, and cream products, as we all know, they need to be easy to blend in. They need to be blended without much pressure and effort, because if you are applying a lot of pressure and effort, you're probably kind of starting to break down that beautiful foundation that you've got underneath, right? So it needs to be light, it needs to be a situation where you're not pressing hard. And this is just kind of amazing how you get a very satisfying color payoff out of this with minimal product used and very, very easy blending. It's phenomenal. Um, sometimes I kind of go off of using it a little bit. You know, I'm trying different things, but anytime I come back to it, I'm like, yeah, that's incredible. Plus, I've had this for well over a year, and um, it does have this little, like, extra stopper cap here and this cap, but it has not dried out a bit. Like, it really has had great longevity. You know, you're not seeing cracks. You're not seeing the cream product pulling away from the sides, which sometimes you will see as a cream starts to dry out in various formulas. This one just works so well. It's a beautiful tone. You know, not too warm, not too cool. It's just a great middle ground. And yeah, I'm a huge, huge fan of that. I think it works flawlessly, and I really haven't found anything at a lower cost that works just as easily as that does. Now let's talk about a cream blush that a Again, it's a beautiful texture here, and um, there is something on the market, or that used to be on the market, that might have duped this, but these Air Matte Blushes from NARS. Okay, there's several shades. My favorite one is this color called Freedom. It's kind of like a, I don't know, a little bit of a soft, dusty berry shade. I say dusty berry because see how that color isn't 100% like super pure? Not like real bright and pinky. It's got a little neutral in there. Um, the texture on these blushes, and did I mention these in an anti-haul video. Like, I'm, I don't think I'm going to try those. I don't know. I don't know if I need those. But I ended up getting them in PR, so I did end up trying them, and I'm very happy I did. The texture here is kind of mousse-like, okay? It's light. It's another very easy-to-blend product that is also pigmented, um, that a little goes a long way with. I like to use it with my Pro Mini Flawless Airbrush. If you're looking to buy this type of brush these days, you know, because this came as a little perk from Sephora, get the 56 
sticks. It can work for foundation. It could be great for that bronzer step also, but I just go straight into the product and then get it on the skin, or you could use your fingers. I mean, really any method works for this. It blends in just, it really is light as air, um, but yet you do have the pigmented color. This shade doesn't have any shimmer in it. It's just purely what you see is what you get here. But the thing that if they were still making it, the thing that would be similar to this would be the Maybelline Dream Mousse blushes. Those were absolutely phenomenal. And these are kind of like those. Um, remember the Dream Mousse concealers too? That was awesome as well. Um, Maybelline, we're well overdue for a comeback on those products. But this is a really interesting formula. I do have a lot of different cream things. You might think, maybe your mind goes to ColourPop when I start talking about a cream blush texture that is not especially dewy, not really tacky and glowy, you know, but it's just got that moussey quality. Your mind might go to ColourPop, but those are much more firm than this. Okay, this has a lightness. This has a little bit of that whipped quality, if you know what I mean. Very interesting and very unique. I do have another um, cream blush that was undupable for me so far. Not so much because the formula is really different, but because the tone is so unique. And I run into this a lot with different high-end products. This is my um, Melting Blush from Rare Beauty. Adorable packaging. That just stands out above and beyond everything. But the product on the inside, the blush shade here is nearly neutral. And the texture of it, I would say, you know, it does feel very light. Um, it's kind of a cream to powder feel, which I have experienced with other cream blushes, even from the drugstore. So that's not really the thing that's holding me up on duping this one. What the issue is, is the tone. Um, I have so many new at the drugstore cream blushes. I mean, I tried every e.l.f. putty blush, different cream blushes from Milani and other brands. And what's interesting about this one is that it's a little more off the pure shade, okay? So the color is not just pink. It's not just straight up peach. It's not just um, tan or something. It's got this little kind of merging fusion of shades where it's a little bit dusty. And you're gonna find more shades like that in lip colors and also in blushes from some of these high-end brands. And then I feel like more of my drugstore stuff gives me more of the pure colors and less in-betweener shades. And then out of the blue, like, you know, Maybelline will put out a nudes collection of something and then you'll be like, okay, now here's all their neutral shades. But they don't always immediately do colors like this. And this one, I mean, I have a decent amount of cream blushes in my stash and I could not dupe that particular, just kind of dusty rose, light, easy, effortless shade. It doesn't seem like it would be that special of a shade, but it is. That's my point here. Oh, I have a brow product that I wanted to tell you guys about that's very unique. I have nothing else like it. It's from Benefit, and it's called the Brow Micro Filling Pen, and I have it in the shade Medium Brown. Now, not too long ago in my Undone Beauty review, that's a new brand at Ulta, I was talking about a brow pen, and the pen was so juicy. It was actually a brush tip, and that pen carried so much juice, if you know what I mean, so much liquid, that as I was trying to fill in my brow, with it, I quickly went overboard. And I kind of gave you that review. I gave you that little critique on the product. And I did see a lot of comments in the comments section saying like, you know, those are probably the ideal products for somebody who has less brow and is trying to create those fine hair like strokes. But I'm still here to say that that product laid down a lot of liquid at once. And if you've got even less brow than me, that should probably concern you even more because those strokes are gonna show big time. You need something fine you need something that's not gonna lay down too much at once. And this brow micro filling pin, this is very cool. This is cut at an angle, but it's a felt tip, three pronged, um, like brow fork practically, like cut at an angle, three little things going out. And I tell you, it does not lay down too much at once. And I think I could see a person with very little brow being very pleased with this. But even for me, like I can use it to fill in my brows and get a really nice natural controlled fill in. You have so much control with this, um, but it looks really good. And I can feel it going, getting in there, you know, getting within the hairs, filling in any sparse areas just with total ease. And I'm not scared that too much is going to lay down at once. So control is so important with these inky brow products. If there's going to be a lot laid down at once, it's a problem for anybody, not just me. Anyway, if you're considering something like that, you want something that really lays down the 
fine little strokes, but you don't have to be scared about getting in here, even to this area, like I really fluffed up my inner part and it just looked so good. I was so pleased with it. I feel like I'm getting kind of hooked on this product. So I wanted to share that I've tried nothing else like it. Okay, what else is difficult to dupe here? Kind of an obvious one. You guys know I'm very tied to this product, but IT Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. I talk about it all the time as a big, big fave. Um, it builds up the lashes so quickly. If you have fine kind of sparse lash hairs like me, the more you rake a mascara through them, the more clumped up they get and the less volume, the less amount of lashes you actually see. So speed is your friend. If a mascara can build up quickly and require minimal passes through the lashes and still build up with intensity, that's going to be your friend. And that's exactly what this does. This tube is actually probably close to on its way out, like maybe in the next couple of weeks it will be done. And it still just did wonderful things for my lashes. I went liner free today so you could see it even more clearly. It does not flake off. It does not smear off. I mean, the longevity and other practical functions for it are great, but it also just makes my lashes look bigger. And it's good about holding the curl as well because you're not getting weighed down with tons of product. Um, the brush on this really is not incredibly unique. I mean, it's nothing like wild and different. It's just maybe slightly tapered toward the tip, natural short looking bristles here. But when it comes out of the tube, it's not like completely clean of product. You know how some mascara wands, you take them out and it looks like, well, is anything on there? I'm not really sure. Maybe we'll find out. Um, but this one, you can definitely see some goop on that thing. And it is able to, you know, easily translate to the lashes and create a big lash look. And um, there are good drugstore mascaras out there. There are some that I love. I like L'Oreal Lash Paradise. I like CoverGirl Super Sizer, to name a couple. But this one is really outstanding. And just to update you, I haven't found anything from the drugstore that does quite what this is doing yet. Um, but I will, of course, keep my eyes out for it. I got a few different lip colors that I want to mention. These are really special formulas that I'm finding are impossible for me to dupe right now. One of them is the Full Force Plumping Lipsticks from Buxom. Such a great product here. The colors are probably something you could find a dupe for, but the feel, I mean, it, it's undeniable that this is a special cooling feel on the lips. They feel so good. They're luxurious. There's a nice bit of thickness to the product going on that's not annoying whatsoever, but it's just luxurious feeling. It's expensive feeling. And then the tones that I have, I have this whole like nudes collection that they put out. I also have their white Russian um, color in this and they are gorgeous shades. And I can link to the video. Did I try them all on or just my faves? I'll link below to more info. I'm wearing the shade Pop Star today, which is a beautiful dusty rose color. I think it's stunning. You can see a little bit of shine from it, but not a boatload, but it's the feel. I could probably sit here and give you a dupe for this shade, but I would not be able to dupe the experience, the feel, that beautiful texture that this has. It's very, very unique. And the cooling sensation, it's not like annoying. It's not stingy. It's not painful. It's just soothing cooling, okay? I love this stuff. And the lips do look pillowy and lines kind of filled in when you've got this on. You know, it just, it, it's a really quality lipstick and just completely without a doubt one of my favorite lipstick formulas. Another thing that I found very difficult to dupe if I can reach for it here are these NARS matte tinted lip balms. These are very very unique in formula. Um, they will go on your lips. You'll have them on your lips and you will have the appearance really of a matte liquid lipstick basically. You know complete matte full coverage color but they're soft, they're balmy, they're easy, you know, they're light. Um, they're everything you want in that low maintenance tinted lip balm, but a completely matte look. They're really more smooth and comfortable than the Glossier um, Generation G products. I like those too, but these have a slip across the lips. I would love to see an expanded color range because right now it looks like it's just nudes from this line. So like the color Whiplash, I wore that recently in a video. I've also got Unrestricted, that's that soft, kind of pinky nude. Touch Me is a little bit deeper. The colors really 
are nice here, but wouldn't it be cool to find some berries and some different tones coming out, maybe a soft red? Oh, that would be beautiful in this formula. Nars, if you're listening, can we do that? But again, very difficult to dupe. I have nothing in my collection that's really doing what those are doing. And finally, from Glossier, the balm.coms. Um, I have the berrybalm.com and also the cherrybalm.com. Uh, these smell fantastic, um, but I was playing with them and I was kind of comparing these to my e.l.f. Rider dye lip balms that are also in a tube format, and those are nice, but these have a next level comfort and smoothness. Like, the thing about the e.l.f. Rider dyes is they give off a little more color than you'd expect. Like, they're just coming out of a squeezy tube, and I think immediately our sights are set lower in terms of pigmentation and just fullness of coverage on the lips, but they're quite colorful. They're really good in that way, but these are so comfortable. Um, the softness, the smoothness, the ease of putting them on, and then the surprising amount of tint in the berry and the cherry. Like, it's just, it's awesome. Also, the scents take you straight back to, or take me straight back to some of those things that I remember using in the drugstore back when I was probably in high school, early college years, that naturistics line where everything was just so juicy smelling, like popsicle candy kind of vibes, you know, with those smells that's what's in here. It takes me straight back to that. So I love that nostalgic quality to these. Um, but I also just love the smoothness and softness. It's kind of like um, Vaseline perfected a little bit, a little thicker, hangs right where you want it to be, not greasy at all, but very, very moisturizing. If your lips are super dry, um, gosh, can you imagine taking the e.l.f. lip exfoliator all over and then popping on one of these? There's your most comfortable lip day right there. But again, you know I'm I'm loaded with lip products, but I can't quite dupe those. All right, guys, so that is my list. That's everything on my list of things that has been very difficult for me to dupe. They are unique, special formulas that I love, that I really enjoy. I'd love to come up with a great dupe, and I'm not going to stop trying, but right now, those are the things that have uh, definitely given me some major roadblocks. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Let me know uh, any video requests that you have in the comments section, and I will see you very soon. Love you. Bye.